Hi everyone, I thought I would do another vase transformation today. Um, I got this pair of kind of urns, I guess, from a local charity shop. And you know me, I like the shape, but I don't like the gloss, it's got a crack in it, I don't like the crackle glaze. So, I thought I would go for a French country look because it will go in with a lot of the furniture that I'm doing these days. So what you're going to need is, I used, I'll bring out PVA glue, and I mixed it in with Annie Sloan on Fleur paint, let me just show you, which is a dark brown. So if you can see that, it's a lovely dark brown. So I'm putting, I've added the, um, the PVA, um, or I'm sorry, rather, I put the PVA glue in this little tub first, and then I added a little bit of the on fleur, because basically, because this is really shiny, um, chalk paint does stick to a lot of stuff, but it, it's much harder for it. So I just tested out trying PVA and on fleur. Um, so I wouldn't try it on a piece of furniture, but for this purpose, and just sort of for, um, interior objects it's really not a problem so I've mixed that up I probably used five to one ratio of PVA glue to on fleur so what we're going to do now is um, just put it on You don't have to be careful about it. Just kind of push it into all the, the details. It's obviously gonna need another coat, but not with the PVA glue, just with on fleur on its own. called PVA glue in America. Is it actually called PVA glue still? I mean it's very cheap here, that massive size that I showed you is like five pounds, so like about eight, nine dollars. So it's not expensive. You can obviously, you could prime it using a spray primer or whatever, but I thought I'd just try this out. Make sure you go in the inside so if you're going to use it in photos, if you're going to use it for staging, that it doesn't look white on the inside while you're getting there. Right, I'm now gonna let this dry. So I'll be back for around two in a minute. Okay, the coat of the Enfleur and PVA glue, the first coat is dried. Um, I thought I might be able to get away with one coat, but um, clearly not, so I'm gonna put a second layer on. So I'm just gonna start upside down this time. So again, you don't need to be careful doing this. Um, obviously you don't want to get too much in the details, otherwise you're going to lose the details when we come to add um, more paint and you don't want it to look flat, so definitely don't do that. So the mixing of the um, PVA and the glue was um, just a bit of a test actually, because um, I haven't done it before. <laughs> but I just thought, you know what, I'm gonna try it. So, and it worked out okay on the, um, on the finished piece. But 
I wouldn't say do it obviously for a piece of furniture or whatever. Um, but for this purpose, absolutely fine. Quite chuffed with myself actually. Right, nearly there. It doesn't have to be perfect because I'm going to put a coat of on fleur um, and he's Sloan's chalk paint um, on without the PVA glue after this so if you can still see bits of the cream it's really not a problem. Right, I'm going to let that dry now. Right, so second layer of on fleur and PVA glue has dried. So I'm now using just the Annie Sloan on fleur um, on its own. I'm using a crappy old chip brush, so use whatever you've got. So this is the colour that's going to come peeking through after we've added the others to um, give a bit of depth. Right, the coat of um, Annie Sloan's On Fleur um, has now dried. You can see it's now got a matte chalky finish rather than the slightly slimy, uh, slimy? shiny bit where we had um, PVA glue in. So what we're gonna do now is um, some kind of dry brushing, heavy dry brushing. Um, if you don't know what that is, um, I'll go through it. So um, this color we're gonna use is um, Annie Sloan's French Linen, which is this kind of neutrally, grey, taupey colour. I'll show you here. Um, so with dry brushing, um, you need to have a flat brush. Don't try and use um, one like that because it won't work as well, because it holds too much paint. Um, so I use a little bit of shop towel, but you can use a piece of cardboard or whatever. And so we're basically just gonna layer colours up. So I dip it in, there's not a lot on there. So my best advice to you would be to start light and you can always go heavier. So normally with dry brushing you take pretty much all of the paint off. Now I don't want to do that here, I want to have quite a bit of paint but not as much as if you're actually going to paint something normally if that makes sense. So if I show you here, because you want areas of the on fleur to come through. So I'm just dipping it in a little bit. And I know it looks an absolute mess right at the moment, but it won't at the end. It's the same as doing furniture, things look kind of hideous as you go through and you're doubting yourself, but don't doubt yourself, this is pretty much um, foolproof. Now if you like a bit of um, sort of bling, you could put on the details a little bit of gold or bronze underneath before you do this French linen but I want it to look quite earthy so it goes with my furniture. So you can see I'm being a bit braver now. I'm not um, wiping it on the shop towel first. You're just making sure that you're not covering all of the on fleur up because then it's, well, it's a bit pointless, isn't it? So I guess we can call this wet kind of dry brushing, if that makes sense. And it's one of my favorite things to do, especially on something where you've got detail because it highlights it. And we're gonna layer a couple of colors here. So there's two more colors to go after this. 
Um, so obviously you don't need to use any Sloan paints. I'm not sponsored at all. You can use, you know, whatever you like, whatever you have to hand. So I'm being quite cautious at the moment and not putting too much on and that's definitely the way to go um, with dry brushing because what you don't want is a big kind of splodge. But if you do do that there are ways around it so if I put too much of French linen on um, in a certain place here I could go and get my en fleur, the dark chocolate brown and dry brush it over. Um, so it takes away some of the French linen. I hope that makes sense. And the bonus of dry brushing is that it doesn't really take long to dry at all because you're not using much paint. So, and I guess always it's cost effective as well because yeah, you're not using a lot of paint at all. So I definitely recommend this technique for anything with detail, say furniture that's got beautiful in intricate carvings um, or details. It looks like amazing. So a third colour I'm going to use is Annie Sloan's Country Grey um, and it's this kind of beigey, neutrally colour but obviously lighter than French linen. So you can see what I'm doing, I started with the darkest colour on Fleur, then French linen and now Country Grey. So I am going to use the same brush basically because there's barely any paint on it. Um, but um, I would suggest using a fresh brush, but um, I don't have many clean ones left now. So let me just move this out of the way. So similar thing, I'm gonna start off light. So dip it in, just take the excess off. And then put it over. So I'm gonna use less of this than I did the colour before, but hopefully you can see already what a difference it makes. So we're just adding dimension upon dimension, basically. So we've got one more colour after this. And then we have the glaze, which really brings it to life. Massive fan of glaze. I'm just going to turn it upside down again so I can make sure I'm getting under here. As you can see I'm getting braver again, I'm not taking the excess off. So this is, as I said, it's like a wet dry brushing. Um, we'll do a proper bit of dry brushing um, in a moment with the next colour.
So you basically just keep going until you're happy with it. Not whether it looks like mine, when you're happy with it. Because when I first started, I think I said it in the first video, I used to think, oh my God, I'll watch these videos and try and recreate it. And mine will always look, would always look different. And I thought, oh my God, I'm useless. I'm no good at this. Um, but actually what I've learned is if you ask me to do the same thing twice, it would look very different um, both times. So don't sort of set yourself up to fail because that's what I did. And it, I really took um, a confidence knock because I thought, oh my God, I'm, I'm rubbish. But you're not. This isn't rocket science. It's just practice and it's fun. So what I'm also doing now is I'm just lightening up some of the dark bits with the omfleur so it's not so obvious. I don't want to cover them all up, I just want to get some of the lighter paint in there. But as I said, no right or wrong, just keep going until you are happy because that is basically what I do. a bit too much paint on my brush that time that's why I'm dabbing it off right getting there not much longer I don't think starting to look a lot better but obviously it's not totally there yet but you should be getting a bit more confident by this point So obviously you don't need to do it with these colours either. I'm doing it because I'm using a lot of neutral colours at the moment in the furniture that I'm doing. Um, but what I would suggest is that it use four colours that are quite similar um, in tone. Um, so like if you use red, green and yellow, it's obviously gonna look um, quite a mess. Um, but there's no reason why you can't do this with blues or greys or whatever kind of colours you like. So my advice would be, especially if you're doing it for the first time, keep it in the same colour family. And I've just stuck my elbow in my um, Scotch shop towel. That's clever, isn't it? I told you I was messy.
Right, da da, that is coat number three. Done, sorry, I'm just gonna wipe my elbow off. And my hands, because I'm a mucky pup. Right, I'm gonna let this dry for about 30 seconds, and then we'll go into the last color. So now, Annie Sloan Old White, um, if I put my brush in. So it's like a kind of off-white, um, slightly creamy. It's an old looking sort of white color, if that makes sense. So same process, I'm dipping in. Um, this is gonna be more like proper dry brushing, so I'm gonna take a lot of it off. And what I'm doing is going over the high points so when I say that, that's the kind of, that's the raised elements. Oop, didn't have enough on my brush that time. So take it off. So you can always do this kind of movement. So again, I'm not holding the brush heavily at all. So there's hardly any paint in here, so I'm having to like guess where the, where the paint is. So hopefully you can see that you're getting lovely highlights. Way too much, Julia. So really light touch. You're barely holding the brush. And you can see this is a bit that kind of brings it to life. I said just do it on the high points and now I'm doing it everywhere because I'm kind of enjoying myself, so ignore me and just do what I'm doing. So there's literally like barely any paint on here at all now. Right, I'm happy. So again, it's gonna take about 30 seconds to dry. So I'll just stay talking to you. What do you think about my hair? I'm probably gonna get really horrible comments now, aren't I? Um, but I got fed up with my long hair driving me nuts and um, yeah, had greys coming through, so I thought oh, I've had enough of that. Right, next step is um, glaze. Um, I'm using Fusions Antique Glaze, but um, just because I happen to have some. Um, you can buy clear glaze and then you can tint it with whatever colour you like, but this is great for giving a kind of antique look, hence the fact antiquing glaze. Um, it's kind of like a bronzy brown. So you could always, if you've got some bronze paint, you could always mix it with glaze. Um, but this is pre-mixed. So it's one of my favorites actually. So that's what it looks like. So it looks like it's quite solid, but um, as with most glazes, um, it's kind of opaque. So if you haven't used glazes before, um, a glaze is basically a medium that um, stops the paint or the color drying out um, as quick as it would be if you're just using paint on its own. 
Um, if you don't have glaze, you could use a colour wash, so paint with water in it, but what I would advise is to put a top coat of some sort on this now, because otherwise it will start pulling off and you may see the kind of original vase underneath, so that's why I'm using a glaze. But yeah, glaze just gives you a longer open time to play with the finish and the colour. Sorry, I'm absolutely covered in stuff here, so I'm just wiping my down a little bit so baby wipes top tip have loads of them right so I'm getting the brush I use to glaze with the other one um, it doesn't have to be a brush like this um, I like it just because it enables me to get in the details so all we're gonna do is dip it in I'm gonna start at the bottom I think so you see at this moment you're thinking oh my god what is she doing she's absolutely just ruined that but wait, this is the magic bit. So I would advise working section by section, um, just so you have a bit more control over it. So you're really trying to push it into the details because that's where it's gonna be kind of left in the crevices. So, get a Scots shop town, and what you're doing is you're taking off the excess glaze, and it gives this beautiful antique look. Hopefully, you can see. Can you see that? It's coming up. This is why you work in sections. Because although it gives you a longer open time, if you did say like, you know, part of a sideboard or something and you did one side, a lot of it would be dry before you came to this part. Um, with glaze you can brush off as well, um, but I don't want to in this instance, I just want to dab off the excess. So hopefully you can see what a difference that has made and it kind of brings out all the the colors it just adds that kind of extra effect well, I think that is enough on that section let me just have a look oh no missed a bit so this actually dries darker um, so if you do have any massive blobs of it left, you'll end up with quite a dark um, mark, which you don't want. So, and you have to keep changing your shop towel because what's gonna happen otherwise is this is gonna get saturated um, with glaze and then it's gonna be sticky. So you're gonna be taking the glaze and the paint off, which is not what you want. So I'm taking a new bit of shop towel And now I'm working up.
Right, I'm going to do this section now. Um, you can fold your shot towel and then when you feel it's getting too saturated with the glaze, like that for example, you can just fold it and then use the other side. This glaze is quite sticky so um, unless you like being a mucky pup like me, then I would probably put some gloves on. Right, I'm just dabbing off the excess glaze. Um, normally you leave glaze to dry for a couple of hours depending on the size things but because this is YouTube and I want to hurry up I'm basically going to do the next step now so hopefully it turns out alright. Um, what I want to do is I'm going to get some super fine um, sanding pad um, because what I want to do is to get some of the, the some of the other colours coming through. So I'm just going to gently Gonna rub over. So hopefully you can see that it's bringing out like some of the old white colour. You could dry brush over the top as well, um, but I don't think that's really necessary in this case. So again, just step back um, and have a look at it and just keep going too happy with it. And then we'll see whether they match up. So don't use coarse sandpaper for this because you'll go through too much. Right, and there we go. Let me get the other one. Have I matched them? There's more white on that one, isn't there? Right, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a bit of old white and I'm just gonna dry brush over here. Right, so obviously um, they're not matching, not that I expect them to be exact, but um, I think I need a bit more white. So I'm going to just dry brush over the top. So let me just move that out of the way. So whatever you end up with, um, for some reason, maybe it's because the glaze wasn't dry properly, could be. Um, so literally with the tiniest amount of paint, I've just gone over where I thought it needed a bit of the old white. So there you go. Hope you like them. Um, if you do, um, subscribe and turn on notifications. And um, let me know in the comments if there's anything you want me to do. Have a good day. Bye.